I am Lori Oregon, and I am going to get consent to perform a um, comprehensive abdominal assessment on this young lady named Justine Oregon. Justine, do I have your permission to yes. perform the assessment? Um, I would first start with um, subjective data collection, and with the abdomen, it would include asking questions involving change in appetite, change in weight, whether she has any problems swallowing, whether she has any food intolerance, including lactose, gluten, allergies to foods, um, history of issues with heartburn, indigestion, whether or not she takes antacids. We would discuss um, any complaints of abdominal pain, and if she did have abdominal pain, do you have any abdominal pain? No. If she did, we would discuss the location, the quality, whether or not it radiates, what makes the pain better or worse, also when it occurs, whether it's before or after eating. We'd also discuss any complaints of nausea and vomiting. If she does have vomiting, we want to know how often it happens, the color, the consistency, um, whether or not there's any blood with the vomiting, and the amount. We also would discuss her bowel habits, which would be her frequency, the color, consistency, whether or not she has issues with diarrhea, constipation, whether or not she has to take laxatives for correction. During the subjective interview, we would also discuss past medical history associated with the abdomen, which would involve ulcers, gallbladder disease, any surgeries, any recent radiographic studies. Um, Along with that, we'd also discuss any medications she was taking, current prescription and over-the-counter medications. We'd also discuss any alcohol use, tobacco use. We'd also discuss her nutrition, which would involve a 24-hour recall of um, foods eight, and discuss any diets that she may or may not be on. Now we can move into our objective assessment. Do you mind pulling your shirt up, Justine? The first part of the abdominal assessment is to inspect. You're just going to um, look at the contour of the abdomen. You're going to decide whether or not it is rounded, protuberant, um, scaphoid, which means it's sunken in, or if it's flat. Looking at this young lady's abdomen, it appears flat to me. You're going to look at symmetry, and with this you're looking at masses, whether or not um, everything is, um, if there's any hernia or if there's any bulges. I don't see any of this on this young lady. You're also going to inspect her um, umbilicus, make sure it's midline, make sure um, it's inverted, note, that there, note if there's any discoloration, a um, symptom of a bluish coloration around the umbilicus could um, indicate colon sign, which is a very ominous sign of internal bleeding. She has none of those. You're going to look at the skin. You're going to look at the texture, the color. Make sure it's consistent. Look for any surgical scars. And if you notice that the skin is glistening and taut, that's usually a um, indicator for ascites. Um, any redness could indicate inflammation, and this patient has none of those. Also going to look for any kind of pulsations. Sometimes the, um, you can see a aortic pulsation, which can be normal in thin people. Um, if there's a marked pulsation, it could mean a AAA or abdominal aortic aneurysm, or it could indicate hypertension. Um, you also um, are looking for any signs of peristalsis in very thin people. This can be um, noted. Um, if there's marked peristalsis noted, it could indicate that they have an obstruction. Um, I will first start by auscultating the abdomen, and we do this in that order where you inspect and auscultate first because any kind of percussion or palpitation can increase peristalsis. So you want to get a good baseline. Um, you start in the right lower quadrant. The sound should be high pitched and they should be gurgling and cascading. Normal, you will um, document as normal, hypoactive or hyperactive. If 
There are no bow sounds. You must listen at least for five minutes in every quadrant to ensure that bow sounds are completely absent. Justine, I'm going to start by listening in every quadrant. I would document her bow sounds of normal. I heard bow sounds in every quadrant and um, there were no um, adventitious, adventitious sounds noted. With the auscultation portion of the assessment, you can also listen to vascular sounds. The epigastric area, which is here, will um, give you the sound of the aorta. Over to each side of the upper abdomen, you can listen for renal pulsations. Just below the umbilicus, to the lateral sides of the abdomen, you can listen for iliac pulsations and lower in each side in the pelvic region you can listen for um, femoral pulsations. Some people you may not be able to hear these sounds without using Doppler. With this patient, I was not able to hear any of the um, aortic or vas vas vascular sounds, but you could elicit these, like I said, with Doppler. If you do notice a pulsatile blowing sound, that could indicate a brewery, which would be caused by stenosis or occlusion of the arteries. The next portion of the assessment is percussion, and that is where you place your middle finger of your left hand on the patient's abdomen and then you lightly tap and what you're listening for primarily in the abdomen is the sound of timpani. Um, you start in a clockwise motion and work your way around. Um, if you run into any kind of dull sounds that's generally um, indicative of a full bladder, fluid buildup, or a mass. So I'm going to start by start here in the quadrant, tap, tap. This patient timpani was heard throughout, along with the um, abnormal finding of dullness. You could also hear hyper, hyper resonance. That would indicate um, gaseous distension in the bowel loops. The next part of the assessment is checking for liver span. A normal liver span is six to twelve centimeters on an adult. You start by um, Percussing in the midclavicular -clavic mid line, which is this area here, you start at the top of the chest and you percuss and you keep going down until you hear a dull sound. It changes from a hyperresonance of the lung to dull. You mark that border, and I'm not going to write on her, but normally you would mark the border where you heard the first dull sound. And then you start at the abdomen, mid-clavicular line again. You start working your way up. You continue to percuss until the resonance turns to a dull sound. You mark that area. And then you would take the measuring tape and you would measure the distance between the two sounds. Next, you're going to assess for um, <coughs> splenic dullness. That should also um, elicit the same sound as the liver. And what you're going to do is you're going to start in the 9th to 11th intercostal space, just behind the um, left mid-axillary line. Um, normal um, spleen should range in about, should not be greater than 7 centimeters. Um, it takes the spleen to enlarge greater than um, three times its size to actually be palpable. 
So I will start by cussing on the side. There's a doll sound there. And then you're going to start um, at the inner space just left of the mid axillary line and start down to find the edge of that spleen. Okay, if you um, hear uh, Timpani is normal when they take a deep ins inspiration. So I'm going to have you breathe deeply. You should hear timpani during that. If you do not and you hear a dull sound, that's usually going to indicate um, splenomegalia, which could be a sign of mono or malaria. The final portion of the um, percussion um, segment of an abdominal assessment involves the kidney. Um, I'm going to ask Justine, Justine, will you please sit up for me? And you're going to place your um, hand in the 11th to 12th rib of the patient on their back. And on the ulnar side of your hand, you're just going to give it a thump. Any pain with that? No. And that is the response you should get, no pain. They should feel the thump, but no pain. Let me lay back. If, you, if they do feel pain, it can be an indication of kidney inflammation, the kidney itself being inflamed, or the surrounding tissue of the kidney being inflamed. And palpate, light palpation and also deep palpation. You're going to start with a light palpation. This is, used, this is done by using four fingers. You want to just go into the abdomen about a centimeter when you're doing this. What you're assessing at this point is the muscular and any kind of um, skin surface issues. Make sure there's no um, abnormal findings there. Um, when you're doing any kind of palpation, you want to ensure that you are waiting to do the um, any painful or tender areas last. Um, also, during this assessment, you want to try to differentiate between voluntary and involuntary guarding of the muscles. Generally, to distinguish between the two, during inspiration, you'll feel that um, muscular relax. If it's, a, if it's um, voluntary, if it's involuntary, the muscular will stay rigid throughout. So, Justine, I'm going to start. Start in a clockwise rotary motion. And just four fingers. with this patient. There were no abnormal bees felt and she also had no complaints of pain during the assessment. Now with deep palpation, the um, procedure is the same. You just um, depress the abdomen five to eight centimeters as opposed to the one centimeter with light. Um, also, on a side note, if you do have a um, obese patient, there's a method that you can place your um, opposing hand over top of the um, hand you're using to palpate to get a deeper um, palpation when you're assessing. Um, what you're looking for during this assessment is any kind of the location, the size, any the consistency of the abdominal organs. You're also noting any enlargement, tenderness, masses, pulsations. So as you're doing the deep palpation, if you elicit a rebound response, meaning that they experience pain when you let go of the area between the iliac crest and the umbilicus, that can be a sign of appendicitis. Um, it's called a positive rebound, rebound response. So we're going to start now, like I said, you're going to go um, about five to eight centimeters during this assessment. You're going to again move in a clockwise motion and always save the most any tender or painful areas for last.
you can go just below the um, edge of the um, costal margin and ask the patient to breathe deep, breathe deep, and deeply palpate in. If they elicit pain during this um, assessment, that is generally what we call the, a positive Murphy sign, and it could indicate um, cholecystitis or problems with the liver. She had no pain with this, so there's no indications of that. We are going to, with inspiration, you can feel the edge of the liver. One more time, breathe deep. And you should be able to feel the edge of the liver on your fingertips. Um, next, we're going to um, palpate the spleen. Although it should not be palpable, you're checking to see that it is not palpable. If the spleen is palpable, it's greater than three times its normal size, and that is an indication of a serious issue. Um, what you're going to do is reach across the patient, placing your hand on the 11th and 12th rib, and you are going to push deeply under the left costal margin while the patient is taking a deep breath. Please take a deep breath and breathe out. The spleen was not palpable upon this assessment, so I would document my findings as normal. The kidneys and the um, aorta are the final steps to um, completion of the abdominal assessment. You are going to place your hands like a duck bill. You're going to start on one side and you're going to place your hand in the flank area of the patient and here on the abdomen and you're going to ask the patient to take a deep breath and no change should be felt in this, um, no organ should be felt and no pain should be elicited during this. You're going to reach across the patient in the same area and ask her to take a deep breath. And once again, no abnormalities were noted. Last and final step is um, the um, assessment of the abdominal aorta. What you're going to do is feel in the epigastric area and you're going to go slightly left of the um, midline. And you're going to feel with your thumb and your index finger and see if you can find a pulsation. The aorta should be two to five to four centimeters apart. If there is a um, marked pulsation or prominent pulsation and a sensation that your fingers are being pushed apart, it, this could be indicative of an aortic um, abdominal aneurysm. And this completes my abdominal assessment. Thank you, Justine, for your participation, and have a good night.